All right, so here we go. Looking at today's lesson, we're going to be looking at secants and tangents. Uh, while we've already gone on enough tangents, let's try to limit those as much as we can today. So we look at today's lesson of angles formed by those secants and tangents. It's actually not that bad. Uh, so our objectives are pretty simple. We're going to use the power theorems of secants and tangents. Hey guys, those are right down here, right at the bottom of your reference sheet on page two, are six circles. Page two, there are six circles that are there. And, okay, so on your version there's nine. And what we're gonna be talking about today are the last five. And now they give you five different examples. We are going to simplify this down to two. We're going to take all five of those, and we're going to sum them down to two general cases. It's not worth your time to memorize all five. As long as you can get down two of them and adapt it for the situation, we're all set. So let's get started by looking at our first piece of information here. All right, who can remind me what a tangent line is? Okay, Sam? It only touches the circle in one spot. All right, so if I drew my tangent line... <laughs> this is going to be a little bit hard from here. Uh, we're going to draw a tangent line through A, and we might need to redo that. Alright, so there's my tangent line. So there we go. We now have a tangent line. Notice it touches exactly at A. We call that the point of concurrency, or the point of tangency, sorry. So A is the point of tangency. Tangent line intersects the circle exactly once. And then we have another line that we call the secant line. And the secant line <coughs> is a line that goes through two points of the circle. So our beautiful fuchsia color up here is our secant line. It intersects the circle twice. And what we're going to look at today are the angles that are formed between either two secant lines or a secant and a tangent or two tangent lines. And again, what I really want to point out for you today is it doesn't matter what two lines are intersecting. The result is going to be the same. Please hear me on that. It doesn't matter what two lines are intersecting. The result is still the same. So first thing we're going to do. If we think about how the lines are going to intersect, there's three cases that they can intersect. They can intersect inside the circle. The two lines can intersect on the circle. By the way, from yesterday, if they intersect on the circle, what do we call that? So, uh, from yesterday, title of yesterday's lesson. Okay. An entire homework assignment titled this. Yeah, that's an inscribed angle. So if it's on the circle, we call that an inscribed angle. Okay, and then we can also intersect outside the circle. Those are your three cases. We're intersecting inside, on, or outside the circle. And remember, yesterday, if it's on the circle, it's an inscribed angle, and it's half the measure of the arc. All right, so here we go. If the intersection is on the inside, think about your group of friends. Think about your group of friends. You have this circle of friends, and it's good to be in the circle, right? It's a positive thing to be in the circle in the no. So therefore, the angle formed between these two lines, therefore x, is half the sum of the arcs. If we intersect inside the circle, it's half the sum of the arcs. Now guys, again, I need to make sure we drive this home. You need to turn your brains on today. Today we're looking at the angles formed by the secant. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at the segments that are formed. So we're talking about the angle, and I'm hoping now, as 
second half of geometry students, you guys know the difference between a segment and an angle. If you're solving for the angle, the angle is half the sum of the arcs. Now, if we look at the middle one, the inscribed angle, I'm intersecting on the circle, right? Do you see here on the first one how we have two arcs? We have arc AB and arc CD. How many arcs do we have over here when we're on the circle? Just one. <clears throat> so it's just one half. There's no other arc. So it's just half of measure of AB. But notice it's the same <coughs> formula. Hold on here. Ms. Jones, you told me it's just half of AB. Well, where's the CD? There isn't one. So what's the measure of CD? It's the same formula, folks. It's adapted because we don't have the arc CD. And if it's on the circle, yeah, it's always going to be zero. All right. Now you get to feel bad for yourself. You had friends on, you were in the circle of friends, and you got into a fight. You might have said some nasty things, and we're no longer in our circle of friends. You've been kicked outside the circle. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. That's a, so that's a negative thing, right? So if you're outside the circle, it's half the difference of the arcs. You're going to do the outside arc minus the inside arc. Okay, so if we're inside the circle, it's half the sum. If it's outside, it's half the difference. Is it always going to be A, B minus C? <coughs> yes. Okay, so it's going to be the outside arc minus the inside arc. Okay, now, at the beginning of today's notes, we talked about two different lines. What were they? Tangent and secant. Okay. So let's see if we can get you guys to list this out. See if you guys can do your sequencing here. So I have tangents and I have sequence or secants. How many different combinations can I create? Tell me what they are. If I have two lines, what are my different combinations that I can make? Okay, a tangent with a secant. Secant with a tangent is the same thing. We're going to do, um, in this case, combination, not permutation. So, tangent with a secant. What would that look like? Tangent with a secant. Okay, what's another option? Secant, secant. And that we already have modeled over there on the notes. Now, what's my last one? Two tangents. There's my circle. And there we go. Those are your three options. Now, when we look at these, and we'll see these on the next page, we'll draw these out again. The outcome doesn't change. Where's the intersection at? Still outside the circle, right? So it's the same formula. It doesn't matter what two lines are intersecting. As long as the intersection is outside the circle, it's going to be the same formula. So let's take a look at that. If I had two secants, you already said that the intersection outside the circle, CD. So x is half the difference of the arcs, arc AB minus arc CD. So look at the second one, that's a tangent with a secant. Where are my two arcs? Because what are the two arcs that are trapped inside my two lines here? Balin? A, B, and A, C. A, B, and A, C. So that's arc A, B <coughs> minus arc A, C. Do you know what? <coughs> Did we actually change anything? No, it's still the outside arc minus the 
and side r. r and phi, in other words, the two tangents. We have a, we have b. I'm going to put another letter out here, c. Now, this is going to look weird. It's kind of like ice cream cone. Therefore, the angle formed by those tangents is a half of arc ACB, the outside arc minus the inside minus arc. And that solves for that will give you the angle between the two lines. Okay. And guys, that's it. So again, recap. Intersection outside circle is half the difference of the arcs. So we're subtracting our two arcs, outside minus the inside. And if I'm intersecting inside the circle, then it's half the sum of the arcs. And that concludes our lesson for today.